Childhood trauma carries with it a curse, and the curse is loneliness. The abuse and neglect you suffered as a kid didn't just affect you emotionally. Abuse and neglect caused an injury to your ability to connect with other people. And if this happened to you, you were robbed of what every person rightfully deserves, to be treasured and to be lovingly guided into the realm of human connection that's all around you and on which the richness of your life and even your survival sometimes depend. Now, all through your life, the people who become your friends and coworkers and loved ones and your ability to connect with them will likely be the single biggest factor in how your life turns out. And thankfully, no matter where you begin or how old you are right now, you are capable of increasing your capacity to love and connect with other people. Now you might say, oh, it's too hard. And yes, it's hard, but healing is possible. Remember, there is nothing wrong with you. You have a common side effect of growing up with trauma and it's not your fault. We now know that abuse and neglect early in life can literally change your brain and it can restrict the normal cognitive processes that enable you to seek out and connect with good, appropriate people to bring into your life, to know instinctively how to interact with people and to detect red flags so that you can avoid people who should not be let into your life. Now, as I say this, I know a lot of you are gonna be welling up with emotion this loss of the ability to feel like you're part of everything, that you're a full-fledged member of the human race, losing that is a tragic part of childhood PTSD. To be capable of love, but not to be able to sustain a normal loving relationship is a devastating price to pay for what happened. But you can absolutely make progress in this area if you are intentional about it. If you just kind of leave it to chance and hope you'll figure out how to love people later in your life, when you have more time, or maybe when the right person comes along, I'll be honest with you, it's not very likely to get better. Now, it turns out that having and growing our connections with other people is one of the most powerful ways that you can heal your trauma. There's a large body of research emerging that shows that loving relationships actually help us heal, not just our bodies and not just our emotions, but even our telomeres. And those are these little caps on strands of DNA in all your cells and they protect you from disease and they slow down aging. So connection is actually quite vital to life. And yes, some feelings of loneliness and disconnection are universal experiences for everyone, at least a little bit. But with CPTSD, it can kind of take over your life and it can drain you of anything good. And this has everything to do with brain and emotional dysregulation, something that's very common for people who grew up with trauma that can make connection really difficult. But connection is related to re-regulation, which makes change in this part of ourselves important and possible. So I have a whole playlist about dysregulation if you wanna learn more about that. Learning to recognize it and how to get re-regulated, that's the foundation of everything I teach. And of course, there is my dysregulation bootcamp if you wanna you know, take a deep dive into that. There's a link to that with the other courses in the, in the description section of this video and all my videos, in fact. But for now, put really simply, dysregulation is a tendency that's common in traumatized people and in everyone, to some degree, to experience nervous system bumpiness when they're under stress. You might feel panicked or overreactive or discombobulated or numb. Being prone to slipping into a dysregulated state, you know, it can seriously challenge your ability to connect. It's very common for people with childhood trauma. It's hard to read nonverbal cues, for example. It's hard to express emotions in a way that doesn't push people away. And it's hard to handle hurts when your brain and your emotions aren't quite aligned with what's happening right in front of you. So dysregulation prevents connections, it puts pressure on connections, and it breaks connections. Re-regulation puts you in a place where you can learn to grow and maintain and repair connections. If you've never learned to intentionally get re-regulated, then getting the skills to do it, it's gonna be life-changing. I also have a free course where you can get started on that too. It's called The Daily Practice. It's really easy, it's short, and that's always linked under my videos on the free tools page there. For me, it's 
been a long process. I was born to p parents who loved me, but whose alcoholism and addiction set the stage for abuse and neglect for my siblings and for me, starting when we were really small. And the violence in our house eventually stopped, and there were definitely good things about my family, but the neglect never ended. And I grew up feeling a grinding sense of loneliness and shame and isolation. And I used to think it was just me. And maybe because we were poor, or maybe because our house was so messy, or maybe I used to think I was some kind of unlikable person. And I mean, trauma can make kids kind of edgy, but I think I was a pretty okay kid. I was really stressed all the time about all the arguing and tension in the house. And by middle school, I had to fend for myself to scrounge up lunch or clothes or money for the laundromat. I spent a lot of energy hiding our home situation from other people and hiding all the creepy encounters with potential abusers outside the family, the kind of person that tends to you know, shadow kids who aren't very supervised, who don't have clear boundaries. But despite all this, I did okay in my young adulthood. I was a good student, I was creative, I was responsible, I made friends with interesting and exciting people, and I had my first long-term relationship. But I could not sustain the good things in my life. And by the time I was 30, I had quit the job, I left the boyfriend, and not because I was moving forward, but because I was falling apart. That core loneliness was getting louder and louder and it made me selfish and it made me mean because I honestly thought the emptiness inside was caused by some failing in the people around me. So of course people didn't want to deal with my anger and unreasonableness and blame and they left. And I tried to change. I was in therapy for years and eventually I was going multiple times every week, but the more I talked about it, the worse I got. And the worse I got, the more scared and desperate I became. And I thought I was the only person in the world who struggled like that, even in therapy. Now, there was no name back then for what was going on, but there is now. It's complex PTSD from childhood trauma. And this is the kind of post-traumatic stress that comes from chronic, ongoing stress. And this can happen at any age of life, but CPTSD develops most commonly in kids who are abused and neglected. So you'll hear me say childhood PTSD and complex PTSD, almost like they mean the same thing, but they don't quite. I always have to apologize. It drives some people crazy and they're like, Anna, C is for complex, not childhood. And I actually, I do know that. And while complex PTSD is the technical term, childhood PTSD is the one that makes instinctive sense to the most people. So when I say childhood PTSD, I can just trust you do know what I'm talking about. Even if you didn't have it, you know that childhood PTSD even exists, that was an aha moment for me. It was like, but it's even a thing, it has a name. It's not just me. And the second crucial turning point for me was when I learned to heal the number one symptom caused by that. And it's another thing there was no word for back then, and it's dysregulation. And I'm talking neurological dysregulation, not just emotional, but the whole body. Now, if you've taken any of my other courses, You've probably heard the story of how I learned the writing and meditation techniques that were shown to me. That was like 1994. And to my surprise, calmed my stressed and hurting mind like way, way down. I started to feel good, in fact. And it brought my thoughts and emotions into order. And what a game changer. I mean, I was a mess before that. It was getting worse. So those are some of the things you can find in those links. I'm sorry I keep referring to them. I'm not trying to be hard sell. I just want to make sure that you know that th this state of healing I'm talking about, I am telling you how to get there. You know, don't, you don't have to walk away going, eh, you're describing me. People say this all the time. You're talking about me, but you don't tell me what to do. It's like, I do tell you what to do. It's down in the links. I have all these courses. The main one is free. And if you take that one, you get invited to group calls with me. We do Q and A, we use the techniques together. It's a pretty cool community and you are invited. And all you have to do is take the course. And I'm always doing this, huh? Pointing down, that's what it is. The description section. It's where all the writing is below the video. You have to click more or read more or something to get the whole thing to open up. So I learned these techniques and very quickly I became calm and clear. I wasn't expecting that. I just wanted to feel like I could handle the night, you know, and it, all of a sudden my life just started coming into like technicolor. And finally I could see what was going wrong with my life and also, what was really good about me underneath all the guilt and self-attack I used to direct at myself back then. 
So maybe you feel anxious around people. Maybe past hurts have made it hard to trust. Maybe the shame and invalidation you're carrying from your childhood makes it impossible to just be yourself with other people and you're in fear all the time that you'll say the wrong thing or that you, or, you know, that other people don't like you or that you don't belong and you think everyone else belongs, but just not me. I used to think that. I totally know the feeling. I spent so much time in my life feeling that way, exactly, just drowning in fear, on fire with resentment, talking about it, trying to get other people to understand and like feel connected with them. I wanted them to know how wronged I was, how terrible were the things that happened to me, how unjustly excluded and overlooked I had been. And all these things were true, and it felt like talking about it should deliver some kind of healing breakthrough that somehow people would care, but that just it wasn't how it was worked. It, it was true, but talking about it and trying to get people to care about me, it just wasn't a path out of that feeling. There had to be another way. It felt like there wasn't one. We all have to talk about painful things sometimes, but as you've probably found, like I did, it doesn't automatically heal that sense of disconnection, of not being cared for. That, I've learned, involves building something you might call connection muscles, emotionally, mentally, neurologically. And rather than trying to run away from people or change them or hate them or cling to them for dear life, I learned to shift my focus onto noticing and calming my triggers. And that's a lot of what I teach in the videos you're watching right now, in the programs I offer. If you don't get triggered, all the other things that you do when you're triggered, well, now it becomes a choice. You used to not have a choice. You just got triggered into this like bad behavior. Now you get a pause and you go, oh, well, I'm triggered. Okay, hold on. Let me do this differently. This will change everything. You'll be able to gracefully handle some of life's tricky people situations, stuff most of us didn't learn from our parents, right? When you had to blunder along all that time with a combination of faking it and fighting people and running away from them, you don't have to do that. You can learn to stay kind when you feel like lashing out. You can care for yourself when you feel threatened or abandoned. You can deal with conflicts with the courage and dignity that were drained out of you by the trauma in the first place. Now, it's amazing how life opens up when you can be at ease with yourself and confident that whatever happens, you will know how to deal with it. You don't have to be all better before you start working on connecting. You need connection to get better right now. Where you are, even if that's at the very beginning of your recovery from early trauma, you need it, it's sad to say, because all the other work that you're going to do to heal, your brain healing, learning your triggers, how they cut you off from people, none of that can be done in isolation. And I'm laughing because I used to hope that it could be. I just thought I'll get myself all fixed, then I'll come out and meet people, but it doesn't work like that. You were born to be connected. CPTSD can block you from finding any connection and it can block you from experiencing the connections that are right in front of you, but you can heal. Your healing gets a huge boost when you're making happy progress in your ability to connect with other people. And whether it's with a spouse or your children or your friends, your family, or just strangers who you, you know, meet at the grocery store, you can learn this in small, brave steps. It's not always easy, but as you take little steps forward, it starts to feel good. The change begins when you believe you can do it. You can, you can heal. You can change your life. You can change.